Hello. In this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on the Jaguar XE, and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. The first thing I would recommend is to download the Jaguar iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a reference guide for warning lights on the dashboard, a frequently asked questions section, and a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons and features. It's a great source of immediate information when a question pops into your head or you just see a button and wonder, well, what does that do? Another download is the Jaguar Remote app. Your car comes with a SIM pre-installed by the retailer who should have spoken to you about the setup of your account that enables many of the intelligent features on the car. Okay. Let's start then with the smart key. Now lock and unlock seem pretty obvious with a reassuring click responding to each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car. Pressing twice will double lock. This means the car can't be unlocked from the inside. So even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. Next, there's a button to unlock just the boot. You can use the smart key to trigger the headlights. So if you're approaching the car in the dark or simply trying to find it in a dark car park, well, this switches on the lights. By default, they will stay on for 30 seconds. This can be extended up to four minutes if you want using the instrument panel in the car. More on that later. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights and they'll remain on for a short period of time after locking to provide light to see you to your door. The final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds or press three times in three seconds and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by holding the button for a further three seconds. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening lowering all the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Similarly, if you get out and then realize you've left a window down, well, just hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled using the instrument panel options. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. So long as it's within a foot or so of the car, as soon as you put your hand around the door handle, the doors will unlock. When you leave the car, place your thumb on the end of the door handle to secure the vehicle. Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat. Steering wheel adjustment is either electric, using the joystick on the right-hand side of the steering column, or manual. Turn the dial on the right-hand side of the steering column anti-clockwise, adjust the reach and rake to suit, and then turn clockwise to lock the steering wheel in position. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls mounted on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the buttons, and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, if you have power folding mirrors, pushing both buttons together will fold them in useful if squeezing through a tight gap. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door. Locking the operation of windows from the rear seat will also engage the child locks on the rear doors. Most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. Pull forward for screen wash. The outer collar operates the rear wiper and the button on the end controls the rear screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. If your car is fitted with auto high beam assist, the car will automatically dip main beam if it detects oncoming traffic. If you have matrix LED lights, the car will keep main beam on almost all the time, creating cones of shadow around other road users so they're not dazzled, but maintaining full beam everywhere else. This mode operates above 30 miles an hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. There's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control, pressing set whilst traveling your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up but when you release it it will return to the set speed. 
pressing plus or minus will increase or reduce the set speed. If cruise control has been cancelled, pressing resume will return the car to the last set speed. The limb button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane keep assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. If the heated steering wheel is fitted, the control will be found here. On the left side, the circular dial controls volume and buttons to skip tracks or change radio stations. The menu button triggers the instrument panel menus, allowing configuration of safety systems, heads-up display and driver convenience features, whilst the outside of the dial controls navigation through those menus. Explore these options to set the car up to your preferences. The phone icon will answer a call or start the process to dial a contact on a connected phone. Pressing it during a call will end that call. A quick press on the voice control button will allow you to use voice commands. Wait for the chime and then call home. A full list of the available commands can be accessed on the main infotainment screen. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pushing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the engine will start. When you switch the car on, the 10-inch infotainment screen will display three main options, navigation, media and telephone. If you haven't already paired a phone, it will prompt you to do so. Tap on the phone tab, then open Bluetooth devices on your phone and select Jaguar XE. Accept pairing on both your phone and the screen, and from now on, it should automatically pair each time you get in the car, allowing hands-free calls, voice dialing, and music streaming over Bluetooth. If you prefer, connecting your phone with a cable will allow Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to mirror your phone screen on the car's infotainment screen. A long press of the voice command button on the steering wheel will then connect you to your phone's voice assistant. Going back to the home page, tapping on the media tab will take us to the DAB radio. Tapping source will reveal the phone you've just paired as a possible audio source. Radio stations can be easily selected from the menu, or you can simply use the voice commands from the steering wheel. Tune radio to BBC Radio 2. The third option from the home screen is the Navigation Pro system, standard from S level upwards. To input a new destination, tap on the magnifying glass and then type any postcode, address or point of interest into the search box at the top of the screen. You can also search for businesses and transport links, hotels and restaurants, where possible, the system will show TripAdvisor reviews. Destinations can be easily set by voice. Navigation, take me to 33 Baker Street, London. When delivered to customers, XE is specified with navigation are supplied with a 4G data connection to allow over-the-air updates of the infotainment systems and maps and provide live traffic, flight information and internet search. When the system has an update available, it will alert the driver on the main menu screen and ask for permission to update when you switch off the engine. Only agree at a convenient time, as the car must then remain switched off and locked for up to 30 minutes while the update is applied. Typing to the left from the home screen reveals additional features, such as 4x4 information and driving efficiency analysis, and the options for smart settings. The car can be set to recognise different drivers, either by different smart keys or the signal from their mobile phone, so the system can develop separate profiles for each driver's preferences. If memory seats are fitted, this starts with automatically putting the seat in the correct position for each driver. Obviously this involves storing a level of personal data, so when setting the system up, you can choose what data is stored on each profile. If you don't want it to store location data or information on your phone calling habits, just deselect these options. The lower touchscreen controls heated seat options, heated windscreen and ventilation. A quick swipe down will transfer phone and media controls to the lower screen for occasions when you're using the navigation map on the main screen. Heated and cooled seats can be controlled by the large rotary dials also used for climate control. Jaguar XE features a pistol grip gear selector. Press the brake, squeeze the trigger and pull towards you to engage drive, push away to engage reverse. Shifting towards you and nudging to the left will enable sport mode. This will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding onto gears longer to give punchier performance. You can manually shift up and down the auto gearbox using the paddles either side of the steering wheel. To return the car to automatic operation, hold the right paddle towards you for three seconds. When you come to a stop, press the button on top to put it back in park. To the side of the gear shift, you'll find a switch to control drive modes. Set to comfort as standard, shifting the switch backwards and forwards will cycle through dynamic, eco and the rain ice snow setting, useful for low traction surfaces. 
Each mode will affect the power delivery, gear shifting and traction control to give the best possible control and response. More information about these modes and the All Surface Progress Control can be found on the iGUIDE app. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. These need to refresh occasionally and you may notice more visible exhaust emissions whilst this is happening. For a diesel it tends to happen when the car is being driven at higher speeds and the exhaust gets hot. For a petrol it happens more frequently when you lift off the throttle and more oxygen passes through the system. Occasionally the car may deliver a message saying drive to clear. This is most common on diesels predominantly used for short low speed journeys in which case they need a blast down a dual carriageway. For petrols it happens when they've been used under load like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Taking the car on road it manages to differentiate itself further. There's just the right amount of feedback through the wheel to inform you as a driver without becoming jarring and enough traction that only the most enthusiastic driver will experience the torque vectoring system automatically tightening their line through a corner, enhancing the agility of the car by applying the brakes to individual wheels. Many sports saloons control body roll by fitting a very stiff suspension. Jaguars use front wishbone and rear integral multi-link which can allow more movement without sacrificing traction to deliver a great dynamic drive. And that doesn't stop when conditions take a turn for the worst. Winter settings take full advantage of Land Rover's experience to make the most of whatever traction is available and keep you in control. Despite operating in a crowded and competitive part of the market, this is not a mass market car. In all honesty, when people are shopping around for this type of car, they make sure the BMW and Audi are on the shortlist, but they often don't look beyond the obvious and take the XE for a test drive. Those that do tend to buy it, because they understand what makes it different. The remote app provides monitoring of many systems. When you first run the app, there is a quick start guide to aid setup, and then it provides control over remote locking and unlocking of the car, tells you how much fuel is in the tank, reports the last parked location of the car so you can always find your way back to it, and it can export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So if you have to note mileage for work, this is really easy to keep track of. It also provides remote activation of the climate system, cooling the interior in summer before you get in, or warming and de-icing the car in winter whilst keeping the car fully secure. This video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the iGUIDE app or videos on the YouTube channel to find out more, or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time and enjoy your time with the Jaguar XE.